Good morning. Good morning. We trust you have come in this room this morning to assemble together with the desire in your heart to worship and praise and honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you here if you're visiting with us. We trust that you will feel at home. That's our desire. And we would like for you to be a part of our fellowship here if you have no church home. <clears throat> there is in the bulletin an um, announcement for the deacons meeting on the 21st. Well, that's Thursday night. I think we need to postpone that uh, for another time. And uh, so deacons listen for an update on that. Our communion and washing of the saints' feet is on August. Uh, uh, that'll be fourth Sunday at 6 p.m. And we want everyone to be involved and participate in that fellowship. Senior Fellowship Dinner is in the Fellowship Hall on the 28th. That's uh, not this coming Thursday, but Thursday week. Are there any other announcements? Um, as most of you know, during Bible school, our um, mission for the week was Caleb's Dollar Ministry. And I just want to read you a really short thank you note that we received. Um, Dear Bethlehem VBS and Church, thank you for your gifts to Caleb's Dollar Ministry to help provide food for the children we minister to. We operate many schools and a large number of the students come to school each day hungry. Because of this, they're unable to concentrate on their studies. One meal a day can make a big difference in their lives. A simple meal of rice and beans seasoned with chicken feet is a lifesaver for many of them and it only costs 10 cents per meal. Our gift of $402 will provide 4,020 meals for children. God bless you for your love and care, Carol Jones. And once again, thank you for doing that. Um, we have actually raised over $1,000 in about six months for Caleb's Dollar Ministry. Well, it's probably about $1,200. So I applaud you and thank you for that. Just a real quick, Nancy's home. And I'll tell you what. We thank you for all the cards prayers. I've even learned to cook in a crock pot. <laughs> it's not a complete meal, but it's edible. But she is doing good. Uh, it'll probably be a couple weeks before she'll be out among us. But she's getting stronger every day and she's getting meaner every day, so I know she's all right. Thank you. Here I am again, but I have a question for you first. Why do jerk daubers have to build under the garage? Have y'all thought about they have the whole world, but yet they have to come and build under the garage? So y'all know what I did yesterday, don't you? Okay, if you were not here last week, this is our Family Life Center Faith Razor, and I have already gotten some turned in. Where's Ted? Ted was the first one to turn his in. He gets a bag of potato chips. Come on, Ted. Thank you. And he even turned in a little extra. And I wanted to tell y'all, when you turn them in, whoops. When you turn them in, I have this wonderful coin extractor called tweezers. And we'll just take them little boogers right out of there, and you can have it right back and fill it again. How about that? So now we're going to add a little element of excitement to this little challenge. This is called the Coke versus Pepsi challenge. Girls, hold them up. Right now, I have to tell you, Pepsi's ahead because Mr. Franklin turned his in and he makes a Pepsi person. So when you turn your coin booklets in and we do our little extractions, pick Pepsi or Coke. Now, if you have another one, that's all I could find was the Pepsi and Coke bank. So just choose one. If you don't care, then I'll choose it for you. 
But anyway, get them to me. If you do not have one, Chris will be back there after church. I want you to get one, as I gave you the numbers last week. And you know what? Some, I added up. If everybody could do $10 a week, that's 40 And at the end of the year, we'd have $48,000. You know, so every little bit, we're in this game together. Every little bit is going to help. So go ahead and get them filled up, and we'll see who wins. Now, the Coke bottle's a little bit larger, so we won't go all the way to the top with the Coke, but Pepsi has to go all the way. Oh, that would be wonderful. Let's see how long it takes us. We'll write down the date today, and we'll see how long it takes us to get them filled. Does that sound good? All right, get out there and do it. Thanks, girls. <laughs> I'm thirsty already, Ron. <laughs> Any other announcements? No junior church today. That means you get to sit up here and pay attention to the preacher. Come on. I forgot. Imagine that. Who has children's church today? Mallory, um, Preacher Doug needs a few minutes before you go out with them. Is that okay? As they're leaving. <clears throat> Let's begin our worship this morning as we give our tithes and offerings. I'll ask the ushers if they will to come forward. Let's worship the Lord with asking our blessings of, or God's blessings upon tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful again for the privilege of coming into your house for worship this morning. We just look to you, Lord, for your grace and just ask that you will be with the service, that you will anoint each one here, that they may feel the Holy Spirit in their hearts. And Lord, we pray, for, ask that you will be with our minister and bless him, Lord, with the message that you would have us to hear. Now as we go into the service, Lord, we ask for a blessing upon these tithes and offerings. And may it be used for the upbuilding of your church here on earth. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
be seated. We'll go to the Lord in prayer for our morning prayer. and There's many on our list. I've tried to keep it updated and current. If you see names that are on the screen or in the bulletin that need to be added or, or removed or whatever, if you would, please call that to my attention. I'd appreciate it. Are there any that need to be called out today? Leonard Gwynn Miller Lanier. Josephine Lanier. Faith and Little Bear. Okay. Miss Ella? I'm sorry? Louise Jones. Chris Byron's father and brother. Yes. Miss Nancy. Hallelujah. God is faithful in the great big things and the little things in our lives. His hand is not short. I'm going to ask Freddie if he'll come and lead us as we pray this morning. And are there any others while he comes? Melissa Chase. Johnny and his family, Johnny Alberson and his family. Any others? Yeah. Edgar Wells. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just are so blessed to be able to come to your house this morning. Father, we just come to praise and worship you. Father, there has been expressed so many needs, and we know that you know those needs, and, you know, I would be derelict in trying to remember all of them, Father, but you know every, every one of these needs, and uh, we ask that you tend to those needs in, in the manner that you wish. Father, be with our military as they serve around the world. Keep them safe, Father, because... Everything we hear is chaos everywhere, Father. And it just seems like everything is against the people of Israel, Father. And Father, just continue to bless this church. Bless our pastor. And that he may bring the message that's put upon his heart this morning. Be with this congregation and continue to bless them. Father, we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Let's take our hymnal and turn to number 359. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Let's stand. <laughs>
assembled here to rejoice and be glad in the day that you have made for us. Father, we are your people, the sheep of your pastor. We enter into the gates this morning with thanksgiving and praise from our heart for what you have done for us. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has paid the price for every one of our sins where that we can stand before a holy God without wrath. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got a story to tell because of what he has done for us. So let's turn to 572. I love to tell that story. You may be seated as the choir comes forward.
volleyball at five. Just come on up here. I want you guys to help me out here as we get started this morning before y'all, uh, before you leave us that are headed out. Come on up to the front. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Come on. She's not afraid. Come on up here. I know you're not <laughs> afraid. I'll look at you and tell. Anybody? Who's going to come over here and help me out a little bit? All right. Come on. Come on. This man, he's already ahead of my game. He's got a piece of candy here. Come on now. I love that song, by the way. I tell you, it's hard not to break loose preaching. Come on here, buddy. Come on up here, brother. Can we do that? You know how to do that? Can we do that? Boom. Can we do that? Boom. I know you know how to do it. Listen, what you guys reckon I got in this bag? What do you think's in there? Would you like to know what's in there? What do you think's in there? Let's pull out. I tell you what, I dumped this in a, uh, in a clear bag so you could see it. Ah, do you know what that is? Oh, what is that, guys? What is it? It's a lot of candy. Yeah, man. He Boy. likes pink. Do what? He likes pink. He likes pink. You're looking after your brother. What color do you like? I like blue. Blue? What about you guys? You like blue. Oh, you like green. What do you like? Blue. You like candy kisses or you like uh, lollipops? Kisses. I like the kisses, too. Well, listen, I put it in this clear bag so you can see it because I need you guys to help me uh, I'll make a point this morning. Let me ask you something. Now, if I was to sit down over here in the corner and just eat all this candy right by myself, knowing how bad you'd love to have some. Would that be cool? Would it be cool if I did that? Would that be cool? What do you think? Come on, guys. Over here. Let me over ask you. Here. Over here. Bring them on in, bro. Hey, listen, let me ask you. Got candy. Candy will bring them in every time, man. Make church folks at home. You feed them, they'll come. Listen. Let me ask you, what do you think would be the right thing for me to do with some of this candy? What should I do? You, you should pick it. You should pick it. Should pick it? What, what, is, what is something I should do? If I know you need this candy, want this candy, and I got it, man, it's good candy, what should I do? What would be the right thing for me to do with this candy? What do you think? Eat, eat it? <laughs> what else? You want me to eat it all? Oh, you don't want me to eat it all. What do you want me to do? There's a word I'm looking for. It stands for us. Us. What is the word that starts with the S that tells us what we should do with things that are good that we, we have? Should, we should. We should what? Right, tell you to eat some. Oh, what, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for, sweetie? Share. Say it real loud. Share. Share. Y'all guys agree I should share this candy. Amen? You all agree I should share this candy, right? Uh -huh. Who should I share it with? Everyone, that is so cool. Well, that's exactly. I know. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. There's enough. There's plenty. There is, buddy. What we're going to talk about today is sharing something really good, but it's not candy. Now, I want to share this with you because I wouldn't do you like that, okay? But what do you think there's something else rather we should share with other people that's really good that we have as Christians? What do you think it is? It's candy. You own the candy. Huh? But so who lives in our heart? God. God and who else? And Jesus. Jesus. Do you think we should share Jesus with other people just like we should share our candy? Yeah. I agree with you, like brother. Share, Absolutely. Like share, like share toys. That's like sharing toys. All righty. So anyway, so here's what we're going to do. I want to give this to your teacher, okay? And she's going to distribute it maybe to the mom, to the dad, or whoever at the end, but you guys are going to get your share of this, okay? And I really appreciate you helping me start out the sermon, all right? Everybody cool? Say thank you. Ah, right, good deal. All right, y'all go have fun, guys. Anyway, amen. Could you stand to your feet with us, friends, as we get ready to get in God's Word? Everybody stand to their feet. I tell you, I, I always enjoy doing children's church. I, uh, I kind of miss that a little bit. Anyway, let's, uh, let's pray together, friends. And I tell you, the song they sang, as we bow our head and close our, their, our eyes, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. That's a powerful song, and it stirs my heart. And I trust today we've pledged allegiance to the Lamb that was slain. Amen? And just give it in our lives. And we just want to give Him this time. So I just trust now we can just come in one accord in spirit and just come of one mind and just hear what it is that God is saying to us now. Father, we love you. We thank you for the Lamb that was slain, Lord. That the perfect sinless son of you, the living God, came and, Lord, humbled himself and became a servant and died on an old cross that we might be forgiven and restored 
Lord, and understand and, and experience the presence of the Spirit in our life. And, and Lord, to know your presence, to know your favor through your grace and mercy. And it just fills our heart with joy and praise. Lord, and again, humility to think of the price that was paid and your willingness, Lord, to love us as you have. We pray, Lord, as we're in this place today, that we'll just be drawn by your Spirit, Lord, to the, the place of mind in our spirit where we need to be, Lord, to receive your word, to think about the things and to think about, and, and just to allow you to accomplish that which it is only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. We'll continue this morning and, uh, in our Bible. So before we do that, I want to mention that next Sunday, we we'll go ahead and bring the first slide up. Next Sunday, I want to take just a minute or two, guys, to have a, a back-to-school prayer. And I know some of you that are going to college, uh, uh, one of them being my oldest, uh, who moves in this week. I know some of you are starting this week, and I don't know if you may be in some different schools with different schedules. But next Sunday, I want to take just a few minutes just to pray over our students, to pray over uh, our parents, to pray over uh, teachers, anybody affiliated with the school system. I want to give you a chance to come. We just want to pray and seek the favor of the Lord and His uh, his divine protection. And I'll be praying for you to start this week um, uh, at college uh, level or whatever. So just know that I want you to come back next Sunday. Uh, I, uh, when I was a little boy, uh, we gave my mom a Mother's Day card. And uh, on, the front of, on the front of the card, it might have been birthday, I'm not sure. But anyway, on the front of the card, it said, uh, this card is dedicated to that wonderful thing that brings peace and joy into every mother's life. And you open it up. And it said, let's hear it for the school bus. But anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was cool. But I know, I know we're excited about the start of the school term. But we want, we want to do that in prayer, okay? We want to send, send our kids back to school with the prayer covering, covering of their congregation. And we want to engage in that next Sunday. So, so be aware of that, if you will. Guys, we'll continue moving through our, our sermon series, if you will, that we introduced last week. Talking about the purposes of the church, if you will. We're utilizing the purposes that, uh, that you've had here. I don't know the origin of that. I don't know who came up with that. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter. But these are the things that, uh, uh, that uh, you have identified as the purposes that God wants to fulfill here at Bethlehem Church. And we want to uh, just speak through that, teach through that, think about these things as we uh, move through these next few sermons. Uh, last Sunday, we did the introduction to that, if you will. And we talked about the fact uh, that Jesus started a movement, not an institution. A movement driven by the right spirit, the Holy Spirit. A movement that gets results and a movement that is not dead and it certainly is not finished. Now I'm going to try to slow it down just a little bit today as we talk through this next section. We'll see just how successful we are at that as we move through. Our central text is in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47. If you have a copy of the word, I encourage you now to turn to the book of Acts chapter 2 We'll read through this passage again as we did last week, as we did last week, and begin to move forward with the message that we have today. And I love this passage. This excites me every time that I read it. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 is where we'll begin at today, friends. As they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. We see this purpose of them becoming empowered by God's word and his spirit to serve Jesus on earth being fulfilled in this verse. Verse 43 says, everyone was filled with awe in many wonders, and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together, now catch this guys, all the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods. They gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts. And I say, wow, what a family. What a family that people were being united to, which is one of the purposes identified here at Bethlehem. Verse 47 says, praising God, that is, God was being honored and glorified and worshiped, which is certainly one of the purposes that have been identified here. And then it continues on, it says, and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And in that we see the purpose of leading people to Jesus Christ. We see the four purposes unfolding there in the early church as God was beginning, beginning that enterprise, if you will, that movement that carries on today. And bless God, as we said last Sunday, we're still a part of that. That has not died, that has not diminished. Bless God, it's still happening and it's happening uh, here today. And I believe that I'm excited about it and I hope that you're excited about it as well. There's nothing more excited, there's nothing more compelling than to be part of what it is that God is doing on earth 
in any particular location. I promise you, friend, if you want a fulfilling and exciting life that's uh, uh, filled with purpose, get in tune with what God is doing, step forward in that, and don't allow anything to deter you from fulfilling God's plan for your life and for your church. Today we're going to talk about leading people to Jesus, leading people to Jesus, if you will. As we continue on, and uh, next Sunday we'll pick up another purpose, and then uh, so on and so forth, okay? Today, when we think about leading people to Jesus, so we've got to understand that is certainly an individual element to that, as we as individuals sharing our faith, like the kids want to share the candy, is a part of our life, as well as a collective, collective action as a body of believers that we're called of God to engage in on a regular basis. Now today we're going to talk about the more personal aspect, the more uh, personal individual witness that you are called to be to lead other people to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Today we're talking about the individual. Next Sunday, as we begin to talk about the power of the church family and uniting people to the family, we'll begin to look more at the collective type of effort that we're all called to be part of and to be engaged in. I believe in the local church. I believe that it's God's plan to accomplish His work is the local assembly of the believers as you are privileged. I mean you are privileged to be part of one that is in tune with what God is doing. We're talking about three points today. And if you look at the, uh, uh, the sermon outline, if you will, that's enclosed in your bulletin, uh, you'll see the three points. Stick with me as we go through this. The first, the first thing we're going to talk about today is the motive. The motive for witnessing, the motive for trying our best to lead other people to Jesus Christ under the anointing and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And the first thing today that we see for the motive is love for Christ and a love for people. Man, I hope you love Jesus today. I hope you're, I hope you're mindful that even though you didn't see it in the natural, even though you didn't see it with the eyes, you've seen it in the Word, and the Holy Spirit has bore witness in your spirit of the price Christ paid. For your opportunity to have a relationship with him. Think about that. And, and, and fortunately, we live in a society that doesn't, utilize, that doesn't utilize crucifixion as a means of execution anymore. But it's one of the most horrid deaths. And perhaps you've been taught on this, but perhaps you've learned about this thing. I, I speak about the cross often because in that I just see the passion of God revealed in a tangible way. When it says that while we were yet enemies with God, outsiders of the kingdom, sinners, Christ or God demonstrated his love for us by sending his son to die on the cross. It was a horrible thing. The death of the cross was the most hard thing. And I won't go into all the vivid uh, descriptions of that day, but you know that. And, I, and, and it instills with me, within me, a love. It instills with me a compassion and a desire to see Jesus Christ honored and glorified. And it just still instills with me a, just a, a love for him. Have you ever had somebody who in the natural, if you will, did something really, really extravagant for you merely as an act of service? And immediately you begin to sense that connectedness with that person. You know what I'm talking about. It may have been a, a gift they gave. It may have been uh, something they did for you that was beyond anything they would have been expected to do. But yet because of their servant attitude, they chose to do it for you. And immediately, immediately you felt a connectedness to them. You felt not so much an obligation, just an appreciation that is a love. And I tell you, I hope you feel that today for Jesus Christ. You know, I believe that Jesus Christ would have died just for me. I believe that with all of my heart that he loved me that much. If he had known in his $4, I would have been the only one who would have received him. He would have still died for me. And I believe that. And it instills with me a love for Christ. But I also know that he died for the whole world. And because of that, and because of my love for him, I desire to see other people, other people worship and honor him. Other people to honor that which he died on an old rugged cross for. You know, sometimes when people abuse freedom in our country, it kind of really gets next to us because we think about the sacrifice that has been paid by our military men and women for the freedom that sometimes people in this country take for granted and they abuse. And we become offended because of their lack of regard for the price that's been paid for them to experience the life they've experienced. Do you know what I'm talking about, church? Surely we do. And the same thing is true with Christ. We want to see Christ honored. We want to see him glorified. And we know that every time somebody receives him by faith, his death on the cross is honored, is glorified once more because somebody else has turned to him 
and receive that gift that he has offered. We desire to see Christ's sacrificial death bear fruit because of our love for him. We desire, desire to see him praised and worshiped and more. You know, and I love the attitude and the atmosphere of praise and worship in the house this morning and how much we love to come and express to God and to Christ how much we love him, how much we worship and honor him. And the fact that he alone is worthy to be worshiped and praised. And every time somebody receives Jesus Christ, we see Christ worshiped and praised more as they turn into people who maybe once rejected Christ to people who now choose to praise and to honor him. We desire that, and we want that, and we want to see Christ praised. We want to see him worshiped, worshiped more and more and more because we are proud of who he is. Anybody ever met a proud grandparent? You know what I'm talking about? Anybody here a proud grandparent? Anybody? Well, yeah, look at the hands going up. I got your attention now. Yeah. And what do you love to do, Grandma and Grandpa? You love to tell everybody what that little reason for living has done this week. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? You know, little Joe Joe, he sat on the potty this week. Glory. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen it all, and, and he did this, and, and, and you've been around grandparents. And what I love to be around is two sets of grandparents, right? And they're competing one against the other. Well, like my little Joey did so and so and so. And little Susie did this. And next thing you know, you got, uh, you got this little competition going on, if you will, because you're proud. And you want to see that one that you love and adore, honored and respected by other people. Amen? You want other people to be excited about what you're excited about because of what your love is for that child. And it's the same thing with Jesus today, isn't it? I tell you, if you're really loving him today and you really want to see him honored and glorified and see his death bear fruit, it's just like having that grandchild you're so proud of and you want to tell other people what my God has done for me. Not in a boastful way, but in a total way of humility and thanks for what truly has been done by the hand of God. We need, we need that love of God working in our life to cause us to want to share with other people the goodness of Jesus Christ. It's also simply a matter of what I call loving obedience, isn't it? You know, the Word of God is crystal clear that God has called us to go about telling people about Him. God has called us to go about and tell the whole world of who Jesus Christ is. He made it clean, clear, rather, Mark 16, 15, Jesus saying to His disciples, go to all the world. And this is not a missions message per se, because missions starts here and it goes around the world and it makes itself coming back around. Okay, it's everywhere. He said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to get this, all creation. That's everything. It's all inclusive. It's a command. It's not a request. It's a directive. It's not a suggestion. And we don't have to do things, I hope, just because we're trying to be obedient to Jesus. Say we got to do it. We got to do it. It's loving obedience. It's a desire to obey because of the love that's been expressed and given into our lives. In Matthew 28, Jesus said it this way. Matthew 28, 18 in the Great Commission. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. It's a very, very plain directive that's given to us to spread the good news of the gospel at every opportunity, at every corner of the globe. And that's the corner here at Fountain Town and the corner of the deepest, darkest section of the world that you can fathom or you can imagine. You know, Jesus also said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You've read that before in the book of John. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Not because I have commanded you to do something that, that is hard and, and although it can be challenging, something that is difficult, although it can be a challenge, and, and it's something that we don't have it to do with a drudgery. Because I'm going to tell you, serving the Lord can be work, but it's never a chore. Amen? You hear what I'm saying? It can be work. Obeying Christ can be challenging, there is no doubt. Look how challenging it was for him to fulfill his purpose. But yet, yet. It doesn't become a chore drudgery because we're filled with a love for the Savior we adore and we're motivated to serve Him in obedience, knowing that Christ is counting on me. You know, I remember growing up, there was time, time, seemed like every day, Dad would, Dad would give me a job there at home. And he'd say, son, he'd say, son, I'm counting on you to get this done. I can think of specific things that happened. I was a little boy, tasks, jobs he was giving me. Right, that he says, son, I'm counting on you. And when he would tell me that, I remember the weight that sort of put inside of me, the sense of, of responsibility, because I love my dad, and I saw what he did to take care of me and my family. 
And it put within me a sense of responsibility, a sense of motivation to do it and to do it well because I knew I'd been asked by the one who took care of me and loved me. And I still sense that significance of doing what it is that Christ has called us to do. As we've said before, friends, plan A is to church. You know, if you want to see plan A, you want to see God's plan A, look in the mirror. You're, plan, you're God's plan A for getting this job done, and there ain't no plan B. God's counting on us to do it. God is looking at us with expectation and encouragement because he's counting on us to get the job done. You know what Jesus said back in Matthew 28? He said, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And he didn't say, he didn't say I'm going to go and you're going to come with me. He says, you're going to go and I'm going to be with you. There's a difference sitting there. There's a difference there. He said, go and I'll be with you. Not that I'm going to go and so you come along with me. So sincerely, I hope today our desire to share our faith, our desire to tell people about Jesus is rooted and founded in our love for Christ in honor of him and what he's done. But you know, it also takes a love for people, doesn't it? A love for people a desire to see people experience the forgiveness and the goodness of God to share our candy with them. Amen? For them to know the good things that we've had as believers, God wants us to share what it is, to, to love people. I remember this when I was a, uh, a young teenager. I'll never forget this. A young teenager, uh, um, one night, middle of the night, early, early in the morning, a little after midnight, down the road about two miles, this house caught on fire. And it began to burn. And by the time anybody recognized what was going on, the house was, well, I guess if I'm going to say, fully involved, fully engaged. It was burning from one end to the other. I mean, it was, it was a pretty good size house, and it was just blazing. And somebody happened to see it in the middle of the night, and they, and they called the local fire department there. It's a volunteer fireman uh, there in the, in the community of Rosewood. And, 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 the, and the firemen began to wake from their sleep, and they began to head that way. And, and the first fellow that got there, the first fellow who got to the fire, it's a true story, the first fellow who got to the fire, he got there early. Nobody else was there. He was there right by himself. And he realized this was the house of a friend. He knew the family that lived there. He knew the family that was probably perishing right there before his eyes in that house. And they tell the story. I had a good friend who lived next door to this house, and they saw this with their own eyes, shared it with me. And this fireman got there, and he began to go to every window, and bang, and bang, and bang. He was screaming to the top of his lung, wake up, wake up, wake up. He was doing everything he could to get those people's attention. For all he knew, they were in there, and they were perishing. And, and it got to the point where he could not go in on his own because of the, of the nature of the flame. He was there before the fire trucks were. And, and he beat and he beat and he beat. And finally the firemen arrived with the trucks and some equipment. And they began to go in the house. And he was so distraught, he just went over there and sat down in the corner of the yard. And he just cried. And he cried. Now, fortunately, he found out the family wasn't home. But he didn't know that. He didn't know that. But his love for them drove him to do everything he could everything he could to see them awaken and to be saved and to be protected from the fire that was there there you know literally friends we've got people in our lives you all know people you all know people that are in danger amen you know people and i'm not here to preach hellfire and brimstone this is the reality people who need jesus christ in their life you know, people that are hurting. You know, people that are hopeless. You know, people that are in, in pain and agony. And every day is a drudgery for them. And there's got no purpose in life. And friends, they need Jesus Christ. And they need us to love them. And they need us to put forth the energy. It's like the firemen banging on the window trying to save the family. They need us to step out and do what it is that God has called us to do. To speak into their life. Love and hope and words of compelling passion. That God has for them. There's got to be a love for people that is there. And as we love people, we've got to remember, we've got to remember that God's call for people is not exclusive. You know, it's not for one race, it's not for one nationality, it's not for one ethnic group, it's for all people. And God has called us to, to, to love people worldwide in our own community. You know, again, in Matthew 28, he says, go and make disciples of all nations. In Acts chapter 1, he says, you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth for all people. And you've got to remember sometimes that loving people is not necessarily the same as always liking people, is it? Amen? Loving people is an act of choice. The Word of God says that while we were yet sinners, God demonstrated his love for us. God didn't like us, but he loved us. 
And we've got to keep that in mind as God put, he puts people in our path to share our faith with. And it's an act of love for people that is all inclusive for all people. That love is a choice. I think about people who sometimes work in places. And the Holy Spirit really dealt with me about speaking about this for a moment or two. Maybe you work in a place and there's people there that you don't necessarily like to be around. Amen? It happens. All right, and I hear people complain sometimes. It's about working a bunch of, around a bunch of non-believers. And I understand that. I understand that. I worked in the church, and most of the folks there I like. No, I'm kidding with you. I, uh, <laughs> I used to say that from the pulpit at First Free Will. But maybe God has put you there to reach into somebody's life. Maybe that is a mission field God has ordained for you, for you to go and share the word with those people. God may have put, it there, put you there for a purpose. Now think about this example from the Apostle Paul. Okay, and he wrote about this. If you want to turn, you can. I'm going to read it to you the way. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 12, Paul here writing to the folks at Philippi, talking about his current situation, he says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. See, Paul was a gospel opportunist. Amen. And his situation was he was chained to a Roman soldier 24 hours a day. Now, I don't know what these fellows are like. I've got a feeling some of them may have been cool, some of them may have not been so cool, but it doesn't sound like fun to me to be chained 24 hours a day to a Roman soldier with a short chain. That doesn't appeal to me. Amen? That's not a good working environment, is it? It doesn't appeal to us at all. But Paul here, he saw that not as something to be dreaded, not to be something to be cursed and fussed about. He saw it as a gospel opportunity. Let me read it to you again, Philippians 1.12. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. So he's there, he's talking Jesus, these folks. The palace guard, so I read, and I don't know I won't there, but so I read the palace guard was an elite group of soldiers there, and that every four hours they would change uh, shifts, if you will. So he's chained to this one guy for four hours, and then somebody else comes along, gets in the next four, blah, 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 round and round and round they go all the time. He's there chaining these soldiers. And as I've heard it said before, the reality became that he wasn't chained to them, they were chained to him. He had the opportunity to make sunshine out of a dark place, sharing Christ, and word got through the whole palace guard, which was a large group of people. This man's here because of his faith in Christ. So you see, turn that thing around. So if you're in a difficult challenge, you're in a place where it's a little hard to share Jesus because of what you've got to share him with, see that as an opportunity to pray about that thing and realize they ain't stuck, you ain't stuck with them, they stuck with you. Amen? Turn that thing around. Oh man, it's good stuff. You know, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus calls followers of him salt and light. Light is not needed in a light place. Amen? Light is needed in the dark place. Light is needed in the dark place. And if you're in a dark place, praise God, man. That's a great opportunity, isn't it? You know, uh, what if Jesus said, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Just thank God you're in a good fishing hole. Amen? That's it. Use an opportunity to share. He also said that you are salt. Now, we know, and I love salt, man. I'm a salt kind of guy, okay? So if I go to your table which we'll be glad to do anytime, by the way. If y'all go to your table, I'm going to do some salt and thing. It's okay, it's just too I Don't be offended by that. But you know what the cool thing about salt, certainly with salt preserves and salt does this. You know what salt does, though, for most of us? It changes the face, doesn't it? But you know what salt really does? Did you know that salt does not change how food tastes? What it changes is how you taste food. Salt doesn't alter the food. The food is the food. This is true. This is science. So I was told back at Wayne Community, this, the salt doesn't change the food, it changes your tongue. The sodium and salt and the chloride and salt affect the way that you're able to transmit through your nerves the actual flavor that exists in the food. Now God said you're going to be salt. I want you to be salt. God is wanting you to change the way other people, quote unquote, taste Christ. So you're in some places where people see Christ as as some fanatic or some blah, 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 some of this or some of that, they see them all wrong. They're tasting Christ wrong. You as salt are called to change the way they perceive Christ. You know what I mean? You ever heard the saying there's two reasons people aren't Christians? Number one, they never met a Christian. 
Number two, they've met a Christian. Amen. You know what I'm talking about, huh? Let me get rid of this thing. I hope y'all don't mind. It's getting on my nerves. Listen, think about that. Think about that. They've either met a Christian and they loved him, or they met a Christian and they could do without that. Okay? God wants you to be salt and change the perception people have about Christ if indeed they have a misperception. Does that make sense to you, friends? Salt, light. God's people need to, God needs you to love people and to correct them. That's our motive. That's our motive today. Number two is our method, okay? All righty. Good. Gracious, it's 12 o'clock. Look at here. Our method, our method. First, I encourage a friend to become prepared with a plan to share the gospel, okay? I encourage you to become prepared, become prepared with a plan to share the gospel. Uh, a, a mental, spiritual outline, if you will, of, of scriptures perhaps you've memorized or, or some, some documents you keep with you all the time, a plan to share, some illustrations to share to help people understand what Jesus really did. You know, when you do that, you overcome a lot of anxiety. A lot of nervousness goes out the window when you're prepared. You ever gone to school and took a test and you know you weren't prepared? Amen. You ever done that? You've gone to the test like, oh, man. I forgot, went to the ball game last night, got some pizza, and forgot about bed. Oh, I got a test tomorrow, and there will no way, man, you want to prepare. What do you do when you sit down to take that test? Well, besides pray, <laughs> you pray, amen. You know, I used to teach the kids a lot, whatever, and they, they'd come in there on Wednesday nights and, oh, pray, I got to pray, I got a test tomorrow, and I ain't studied and prayed. And I said, I'll pray next time God give you the good sense to study. All right, amen, yeah. That's right. We bear some responsibility in that thing. But prayer is good all the time. No doubt about it. But you prepare yourself, friend. You prepare yourself. It overcomes the anxiety and it builds confidence in your ability to cross the gap. To cross the gap. You know, the biggest gap in the world exists for most believers. There's a huge gap. It's bigger than the Grand Canyon. And crossing that gap, although it may not seem that big in the natural counting of numbers, if you will, it's a gap for a lot of people that runs about... Mine's about seven inches. It's the gap between your heart and your mouth. Amen? You ever been at the gap? You know, it's in your heart, and the Spirit's moving, and I need to speak up and say something about Jesus, and but, but right between that gap, between the heart and the mouth, oh, there's a brick wall. It just won't come out. Anybody, I've been there. Just be, I've been there, sure. Absolutely. But you come prepared, and you come prayed up and filled with the anointed Holy Spirit on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Bless God, you can jump that gap, and you can speak up in a way that God has called you to speak up to bear witness for Christ to others who desperately, desperately need Him. And when you do that, it prevents a guilty conscience, and, and you walking away with your head hung low. I'm reminded of 2 Timothy 2.15. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed Rightly dividing the word of truth. Couldn't we apply that to sharing our faith with others? Amen. Couldn't we apply that? Needeth not to be ashamed. Needeth not to be ashamed. Needeth not to be ashamed because you have prepared yourself to rightly divide the word of truth and the way of salvation to whomever God may put in front of you today to share that word with. Be encouraged, friend. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. We'll pause here. And just tell you very quickly about an opportunity that's coming as I close with this. And I'm, I'm about a third of the way through, so we'll, we'll pick this up next Sunday, okay? I want to tell you about an opportunity that's coming that I'm very, very excited about. You know, one thing that's always been in my heart is to share with people and encourage people and teach people about sharing their faith with Christ. Has anybody here ever heard of this? came out last year. It's a uh, program called My Hope America with Billy Graham. You know what I'm familiar with that? Familiar? Seen the video? I know Cameron has. We talked about it. What we want to do, friends, is utilize this as a tool in September to help people who have a desire to prepare themselves to share the gospel. It'll be a four-session series of trainings, if you will. It'll be four Sunday afternoons. There's four Sundays in September. Four Sunday afternoons. We'll try to do around 5 o'clock. That way we'll have time to eat and play volleyball when we get through. Amen? No, I'm serious in that. Now, and, and, and this... This is simply a DVD-based training that anybody in here can, can work through and understand. And we'll do it together as a group. 
and, and, and I'll add some things to it that through the years God has impressed me with and, and whatever. And, and we'll, literally, we'll literally build within ourselves either a basic skill in sharing Christ or enhancing the skill we already have to prepare us, to prepare us to study, to show ourselves approved, a workman that needs us not to be ashamed, right to divide in the word of truth. And it's good stuff. It really is. And in the actual way they've got this laid out, and don't be shook up, it's dated uh, 2013, because this is from last year when they did this, but I've checked, and leading people to the Lord ain't changed since last year. It's cool, okay? Anyway, and, and, and the process they use here is, is asking you to identify, to prayerfully identify some people that God has put on your heart that you want to share your faith with, and, and to build up relationships with them as you pray with them, and then and bring to a place, and, and they actually utilize a 30-minute video that, that Billy Graham's produced. It's a really cool video, great for all ages, if you will, where you would actually have like what we call a Matthew party. You know how Jesus, after he called Matthew, won't too long, that Matthew had a great party at his house and invited Jesus over to meet his friends. Same scenario. You invite people over, you show them the video, you offer them Christ, and that's very, very quickly a synopsis of that. But even if you're not inclined to do that, even if you're not inclined, listen to me, friends, even if you're not inclined to invite people over to show them a video and talk to them about Jesus, this training will help you just day in and day out for, for spontaneous opportunities that you have to share Christ. I encourage you to come and take it, okay? And to help us be prepared for that, we've got uh, a sign-up sheet right up here. There's a sign-up sheet in the, in the back in the foyer there. And I love for you to sign up. I've got a place where you put your name and your email. If you don't have an email, don't put it down. It's okay. It's cool. Maybe jot your phone number down so we'll be prepared with the, with the things necessary to help you, the materials to help you engage in this act of leading people to Jesus. Friends, I just want to be blunt with you. Now, we can have a purpose plastered on the wall. We can have a purpose in our bulletin every Sunday. And we can say it from now that Jesus comes. And unless we pick it up and utilize it, it's just talk. Okay? And I don't mean that harsh. But I mean, honestly. And, and so the goal here is to, to look at the purposes, and not only just to look at the purposes, but to engage in them. Amen? Amen. Last I heard, that's what it's all about, is, is, is engaging. You know, I think NC State used to have a slogan or a cooperative extension, knowledge is power. Well, knowledge is power only when it's applied. Amen? So we want to encourage you in that. And, and some of you may be intimidated by that, but don't be. Don't be intimidated by the flesh. Don't be intimidated by Satan. There's not a person in here from the very youngest to the most senior among us who cannot effectively share their faith with other people. You can do that, friend. If you couldn't have done it, God wouldn't have told you to. Amen? He ain't going to tell you to do something that you can't do. You know, and, and I'll tell you one more story, and I'll rattle down here. I remember when I was a little boy, which has been a day or two ago, I, I remember... My older brother was in, uh, was in high school, and I was early elementary, if you will. And I remember one time he had this great big project he had to do. He had this great big project he had to do. And I remember it was a book, it was thick, and it was all about North Carolina and all this stuff. And he had to do all kind of all research and stuff. And I saw him do that as a high school student. Here I'm a little kid. And I laid in bed at night crying because I, said, I can't do that. And when I get to, you know, I can't do that. And I knew as I got up in school, I might be called upon to do the same thing. But in my simple mind, which is still there, I realized I couldn't do it. I didn't allow for growth between where I was at and where at that point in life I would encounter that particular assignment. So I was terrified about something there was no need to be scared of. God will bring you along. Amen? God, he ain't going to just save you one day and just kick you out of the airplane the next day and say, fly, baby, fly. God will bring you along. God will bring you along, and I believe that God will use this to help us all come along a little bit further. Amen? Amen. I hope you have a desire for that, friend. I hope you have a passion for people. I hope when you lay in bed at night, you'll think about that fireman banging on that window trying to save his friends. And I'm not tending to go down on people's windows. We'll talk more next week about, about the method of leading people to Christ. Okay, we'll talk a little more about that, so come hang with us. But pray about that. Pray about it. Pray about it, please. And let's just make September a month that God uses to prepare his people here to accomplish great and mighty things for him. You know, when Jesus left the earth, he says, uh, it's good that I go away. And he told his disciples, he said, uh, you're going to do greater works than what I've been doing. And that, that make you scratch your ear. Man, Jesus prepared the way for salvation. We've got the privilege of going around telling people about it, that they can encounter Christ. How great is that? Amen. That is great. Stand with me, if you would, friends, as a pianist comes to play. And I think we're going to sing uh, 
I have decided to follow Jesus. Same song we sang last Sunday. That's okay. Don't let that bother you. And I just want to ask you, friends, have you decided to follow Jesus Christ today? Have you pledged allegiance to the Lamb in the face of no matter what it is that may come your way? Have you embraced Christ and said, me and Christ, and that's it. That's all I need. All I need is Jesus today and his leadership in my life. I need it more than I need material things. I need it more than even my own family. I just need Jesus. And, of course, with that comes all the wonderful things he brings in our lives. But have you made that decision? If you're here today, if you're here today and you've never accepted Christ, you've never made a decision to follow him, I encourage you. Oh, I do. I encourage you to consider. Listen to the Holy Spirit's voice as he speaks to you now and he draws you. You've never come to the place of realizing your separation from God because of sin and realizing there's nothing you can do about it. And come to that place, come to a place of repentance, of a, a desire in the heart to turn and to receive the gift of Christ that died on the cross for your sins so that you could simply be forgiven and deemed righteous in the sight of God. If you've never done that, I encourage it before you leave. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. My number is in the uh, bulletin. Call me 24-7, friends. We'll talk. We'll pray right now. We'll do whatever. There are other people you know you can go to and talk to about it. I'm just encouraging you to do that, okay? That's job one. Top, top, top of the line priority. And then today, if you have done that, have you committed yourself to following Christ in a real way? Not just with knowledge, but with action. Not trying to earn favor with God, but yet in obedience to Him. Fulfilling the purposes He's placed on your life. The altar's open as we sing. You feel led to come and pray about any matter whatsoever, come and pray. Any matter whatsoever. I'll be standing right here. If you want me to pray with you, I will. If not, I'm cool with that too. Between you and God. Let's sing this song, think about the words. I have decided to follow Jesus. Let's just pray together, friends. We'll just bow our heads and pray as our sister continues to play. That'll be great. Remind you again, guys, there's a sign-up sheet on the uh, communion table, a sign-up sheet in the back. I encourage you to sign up. Let us know if you'd like to participate in the My Hope training sessions in September. My two daughters will be at the back with some brochures to give you to look, to read, to uh, consider this. And I just pray that this week God open a great opportunity for you to share your faith to encourage someone else in their walk with the Lord, either to bring them over in salvation or to encourage them as they walk, as they grow. I just believe God will give us those opportunities if we open ourselves up to them and ask His Spirit to lead us to them. I pray for you this week, friends. My family loves you. Man, we love you and appreciate you. And just pray God's blessing on you now. We just pray together. Lord, we love you, Father. We give you honor and worship. Hallelujah. You're such a good and a mighty God, Lord, and you have loved us so much. And you've given us so much grace and so much mercy and your forgiveness, Father. And, Lord, your mercy is renewed every day. We send several morning, Father, just a renewal of your grace walking in our lives. For the provision you've given us, Lord, for the testimonies we've heard, Father, your touch in mighty ways in people's lives, we give you praise. And we just pray, Lord, as we go forth from this place, that, uh, Lord, we'll be led of your spirit, empowered by your word and obedient service for you. Lord, not because we're compelled, but, Father, because we're compelled by our love for you, the desire to please you, our master. Lord, for those that come seeking you today at the altar, we lift them up. Lord, you know every need, every circumstance. We put it before you, Lord, and just commit all things to your hand. We just come together, Father, in intercession 
Lord, one for the other. Lord, we just want to see everybody encouraged. Feel with your spirit and your goodness, Lord. And we just thank you, Father. And we give you praise. Just guard us this week. And lead us by your spirit in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God bless you all, friends. God bless you all.